In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an arrow transition inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. This one's very quick and very simple to do. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, you first just want to make sure you've got two video clips on your timeline. So as you can see in this example, I've got this first clip here and I've got this second clip here. So they're sitting next to each other and there's no gap between these. So make sure there isn't a gap like this. Make sure they are sitting next to each other like that. Now from here, you want to go ahead and create a color mat. So we can go into the project window and there's two ways of doing this. You can either select the new item button and go color mat, or you can go into this window here. We'll right click new item color mat. Then you can go ahead and make sure the width is the same as the composition. We'll press OK on that and go ahead and select a color of your choice. Then we'll just press OK on that, press OK on that, and we'll drag that on to video layer two. Now you want to go to the point where these two video clips meet. So here, then we'll go roughly 10 keyframes to the left. The way that I'm going back with the keyboard is by pressing the back arrow. And then once you get to that point, you want to press C on the keyboard to load the razor tool, or alternatively, you can just press this icon here, make a cut, press V, or just go to the selection tool. We'll delete the first part of that. Then we'll go back to that point again and go 10 keyframes to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make a cut there. So C, cut, V, delete. So you can see we've got a 20 frame yellow video now. So we want to go ahead and convert this yellow frame into our arrow transition. So we're just going to select the box that says fit and we'll zoom out to 50%. Select the color mat and we're going to increase the scale. So we'll go up to maybe, maybe 150. I think that should do in this example, 150, somewhere around there. Then we'll go into opacity. We'll select the free draw bezier tool. So select that and we just want to create an arrow here and an arrow here. If you want, by the way, you can go into the settings icon and you can turn on rulers or you can also go ahead and select the safe margins. I'm going to use safe margins in this example. So select that. As you can see, it's giving us this line here and this is roughly where I want the middle of the arrow to sit. So I'm going to go in the top left corner. We'll go to there. So roughly in the middle, then we'll go to the bottom left. Then we'll move across and we'll go ahead and create the arrow on the other side. So we'll go for that. We'll go up to the top left and move across. And there you go. That is the arrow now complete. Now, of course, if this doesn't look right, if we turn off these safe margins, so we go settings and go safe margins. If we deselect that color mat, so we deselect the mask and zoom back in to fit, you can see if there's any imperfections and instantly I'm seeing that this looks soft. So you can see around the edges, it looks a bit blurry. And the reason why that is, is because there is a mask feather on. So if I increase the mask feather to 81, for example, it gets softer. So we'll take this down to zero. And as you can see, that's instantly fixed it. But by doing that, I can see this bit down here isn't the same as this bit up here. So I'll go into the mask. So go mask one and you can either create a new point here. So select that and you can drag that down like this. Or alternatively, you can just go back to the original point that you had off screen in the corner and then just move that down. But I'm just going to do that for now. And there you go. Now we just want to go to the very beginning of that color mat. So go to the very beginning of that. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the position by selecting the toggle animation button. And then we'll drag the position of this over to the left. So drag this first number down. So pulling it down is going to take it to the left. So we're going to have to go maybe 400 to take that off screen. Maybe zero. No, nope, even more. Negative 500 maybe. We'll take that to negative 800. Even more. Negative 1000. There you go. That's got rid of that. Now we'll go to the end and we'll just go for the plus version of that negative number. So it's a negative 1000. So we'll just go plus 1000 and that should get rid of it. Feel free to go back a frame on yourself though. And as you can see at the moment, that has not actually disappeared. So what we'll do is we'll pull this end keyframe back to here and then we'll just correct that. So we'll increase that number until it disappears off screen. So we'll go 2000, didn't work, 3000 maybe, and there you go, it's gone. Now we'll just take that keyframe and we'll nudge it back over to the right. So we'll put that to the end. And when you play this back, you should notice you've got this really cool transition. But the problem is at the moment, 
as you can see, it's not actually wide enough to fill the screen, which is kind of annoying. So what we're going to do from this point is we're just going to increase the scale. So we'll go into scale and we'll just increase that until it fills the screen. So somewhere around there. There you go. Now the middle point, the point where these two video clips meet, this should be completely filled with yellow or the specific color that you chose. So there you go, it goes yellow and then the clip transitions over into the next one and then it goes back across. So we'll go back to the beginning of that color mat. We'll play this back. And there you go, we've got ourselves a great arrow transition. Now if you wanted to stagger some different colors onto there, then all you have to do is copy that specific color mat. So there's two ways of doing this. You can hold option if you're on Mac. Hold option, drag the color mat up and then release and that should copy. Or alternatively, you can just do the good old fashioned way of copying that. So on Mac, that's command and C. On Windows, that is control and C, I believe. Or control alt C. Then we'll go command V or control alt V. Drag that on top like this. And then we can just offset the color mats by maybe two frames. We'll take the bottom one across, so we'll meet that there. And then we'll just go into the effects window, search for tint, drop tint onto the layer below. And then we can select the matte black too and select a color. So let's go for an orange. Feel free to take note of this hex code, by the way, because you're going to want to paste this into the map white too, like this. And then when we play this transition back, you can see we've got the orange on the way out. Now, if you wanted that on the way in as well, then all you have to do is just drag those two color mats up. We'll copy that bottom one, so the orange one. We'll take that back to the middle and then we'll take it back a few frames as well. So maybe three keyframes to the left, maybe. And now, as you can see, that's perfect. And by the way, because we increase the scale, we might have to go back and adjust the position of all of these. So if they're hovering here, then just nudge them back off, off screen. That's completely fine. We'll just do that. Nudge that off screen. And that should be fine. But once you've done all of that, you'll notice you've got a really awesome video transition created inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, of course, you can stack as many different color mats on top of each other as you like to add a multicolored arrow transition, or you could just keep it simple and have one or two colors. It's completely up to you. But there you go. That is how you create an arrow transition inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really appreciate your support, and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.